very tired. Um, I realized when, before I went to bed last night, or this morning for me, that I'd been up for around about around 20 hours. Um, of course, I didn't do the um, live stream yesterday, but um, that didn't mean I wasn't doing anything else. I was busy doing, um, finishing off Incredigal, uh, finishing off um, the the new run of um, 28, um, two bubbles debating one panel conversation between these two people. And only, I don't know what one gen, one person is, but I know what the other person is. She's female. She's called Tracy. So I kind of have to keep her views kind of in line with, you know, that sort of her as a mom, as a, as a wife, as a spouse. And sort of that sort of comes easily, but then I don't specify who the other person is. And just as a conversation starter. So it's kind of, it's kind of interesting writing a, a, um, a um, comic panel just describing what's happening in the moment that we're living in and trying to keep a um, a, a exciting humor piece going with the with the with the with the dialogue between these two people in the bubbles um, you know in the panel that they're in so you can read that on, on a daily basis because I'm doing it over the next 28 days it started last week and that's on the um, Plan Gen Z on Facebook page. Um, yeah, our business page for all that we do here in Fungare. Um, So welcome. Yeah, that's, I'm just, that's why I'm a bit tired because I'm doing so many things. And like I said, I've been up for, you know, yesterday I realized I'd been up for almost two days of 20 hours and only about four or five hours of sleep in between. And then today, even though I've had heaps of sleep, and for me, a lot of sleep, I'm still exhausted. So I think it's what a lot of people are in the boat right now with, where even though we're at home with our family, with everything that's going on, we are feeling exhausted and we are feeling tired. So I understand, you know, if you're feeling that way. Um, and it's, you know, it's we, we're all in the same boat here. We're not somewhere, yeah, where someone is having a different situation because we're all Kiwis, you know, trying to get through this and trying to, um, you know, respond to what our, um, what, what our leaders are saying and trying to follow the rules so that we can actually be safe and that other people can be safe around us. So the main thing I've been doing is pretending that I already have it so that I behave like I've already have it so that I don't come into contact with people or where, you know, that I am, you know, um, being a carrier as such. And we've noticed, you know, they said that there was um, people around our age, um, well, not my age group, but yes, my age group as well, in the 40s, but also in the 20s and 30s, and even lower sometimes, who are actually catching it. So it is stressful. Please obey the rules. Please pretend like you already have it. So that way you are actually, you know, mindful of everybody else, as well as for your family and caring for your family and yourself. Um, the worst thing that I can, um, you know, really feel for is people who are actually dealing with this right now, who have it, and all those who, who have less members through it. And my heart goes to them because loss through anything, um, accidents, uh, suicide, age, disease, anything is a hard thing to deal with when you're grieving. Uh, the worst is when you're not in this situation where you're not able to actually be with the ones that you've lost to go to funerals or go to, uh, you know, to be there to give them a hug and mourn with them, grieve with them. And, um, you know, it reminds me of my grand grandma when she passed away in 2014. And, you know, it was just, I never thought I'd be so broken over it. And I found myself so, so broken over it, having lost an elder in our family who had always been there, who we expected always would be there. But, of course, nobody's ever going to be there. But in a situation like now, it's even harder to deal with grieving when you can't be next to someone to hold them, hold their hand and, you know, or, you know, to be at a, at a funeral, um, to, you know, be amongst your family members to help them grieve as well. So, yeah. So today I want to talk about dreams. Uh, one of my favorite subjects when it comes to writing is the idea of dreams. And of course, every idea starts off with a dream, um, on how we're going to, 
fulfill it. How are you going to fulfill that little idea and bring it into fruition over time? Sometimes for me, like a 20 years or 15 years, right? Because you have a little idea and you sort of like, how do you, how do you branch this into bigger and better, uh, flesh it out, as we say, where each character has that, excuse me, each character has their own um, abilities, has their own nuances, has their own characteristics, which is the most important thing, that everybody's an individual in the story. Otherwise, it's just a bland little tale about everybody being the same, which nobody wants to read or watch or hear about, right? So for me, 80% to 90, 85 to 90% of my characters are always based around an, a, a dream that I've had. And um, so for, so that's the today's thing, is about dreams. All right, how do, um, how do we deal with dreams we have? Uh, one of the things for me personally when it comes to dreams is that I'm able to lucid dream. Lucid dream is a terminology that deals with people being able to control what happens in their dreams. Uh, either by becoming self-aware within the dream or either uh, realizing that it is a dream by, you know, you're trying to turn on the light bulb and you realize that, wait, this isn't real. I can't turn on the light bulb or turn it off, you know, press a button and such. And so that uh, that sort of makes it makes you aware of what situation is. So that's basically what lucid dreaming is. You're aware of your circumstances. But the other awesome thing about being able to lucid dream, and I've spoken this about on the radio and stuff, is that you're able to um, move things and characters around or maneuver through the dream the way you want as a self-aware person within that dream. So you're having a dream about going to McDonald's or going to the farm or going to, uh, uh, you know, going to a park or something like that or going to another city or going to another country. And, and having that in your dream, you're able to basically be able to decide how you're going to go and who you're going to meet and how you're going to be with them. And how you're going to go around talking to people and how you communicate, you know, communicate your ideas with them in your dream. So that's a fantastic thing to be uh, ability to have in lucid dreams. And not everybody can do it. But if you're able to realize that you're dreaming and, and these are fantastical worlds, you can actually have a great, um, interesting time in that dream rather than having that dream just move you along. And all, usually I'm the third person, and, and most of you guys have the same situation. You're the third person in the dream. You're the, you're the person looking through the eyes of somebody else going, hey, you know, I'm in a dream here. This is the person who I am. And you could be anybody. You could be, you could be a monster. You could be a cartoon character, depending on what you're dreaming about. Or you can be a real person and such. Or you could be a historical figure or in history or in the future, and, you know, or even further past. So for me... Dreams are just a, an interesting way to come up with ideas on how to write stories. Um, one of my uh, upcoming books, maybe in the next few years, is about about uh, actual dreams, how people are able to get powers through dreams and such. So, one, one there was a movie that was written about this um, this whole phenomena um, called um, Lucia. It's a very, very, very high-rated uh, high uh, movie. It's one. Um, let me just check if I'm right here. It's one. It's one of the top ninety movies of all time in Indian movies. It's a Kannada movie. I think that's Sri Lankan, and it's um, and it's really, really fantastic movie. So it's Lucia L U C I A. You can check it on IMDb. It came out in 2013. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, I don't usually watch Indian movies. I, I stopped watching Indian movies a long time ago. The only time I do watch Indian movies is when I'm back, um, Bollywood movies, is when I'm back in Fiji and my family members or cousins are watching it and I'm just enjoying it with them. And not, not the fact that they're bad movies, is that I'm just so used to seeing um, a, a, just huge movies without any song and dance in them. I just, you know, when I was a kid, I was right into them, you know, dancing with my cousins and stuff with, with the themes of the songs or songs that were in the movies. And so later on, you know, I just around about, I think when I was in my teens, I was just like, nah, not, this is not my thing. I'm really into the whole sci-fi thing. I'm into the whole horror genre. And, and, and normally, and majority, Bollywood movies don't do that because that culture isn't about horror or, or, or um, majority horror or sci-fi or anything like that 
they're mainly about uh, romance, um, um, cops, robbers, uh, crime dramas, um, and action movies. They're not really about, uh, with Bollywood, they're not really about sci-fi and horror. But they've started with more people, more directors coming up from uh, having learned their skills overseas, like in the UK and such, have gone back and started making more, um, you know, they even got into superhero-based movies as well. Uh, as well as sci-fi and some they even did a remake and now a bollywood version of matrix so the and that brings me to the whole idea of cultural appropriation indians have been appropriating culture since the 70s and 60s even earlier than that when it comes to storytelling so i don't that's why i don't really you know jive right with the whole idea of um cultural appropriation because i appropriate all cultures you know i'm a sponge so I will, you know, because I'm writing superhero movies, so that's American straight away. So why should I have a deal about if somebody appropriates what I do for themselves or my culture? And I think that's a big, big silliness. And it's only people who don't have a have an understanding of what our world is like culturally that they have a problem with that. And I don't know why they do, but hey, it's it's fun and games, you know. So. So back to Lucia, like it's so the, it's it's a drama, sci-fi thriller. 20, like I said, it came out in twenty thirteen. So it's about a man suffering from insomnia who's tricked into buying a drug called Lucia that makes his desires come true in his dreams, blurring blurring the line between fantasy and reality. So Parwan Kumar is a writer as well as the director of the film. So it's it's such a amazing film, and I, I and I um you know I implore you to check it out. Check out, you know, what it's about um, on IMDb and have a look at it. Like, it's really one, it's really good. 8.3 is a quite a high thing for a sci-fi film coming out of India, right? Um, main, main continent, mainland continent. Uh, so, which brings me to, you know, as I was saying, back to um, storytelling. So, I had a, like, you know, after being worn out and having been up for 20 hours, I think the 18 hours a day before and 20 hours a day last yesterday, um, I was really exhausted. So, you know, I would um, the thing because of my situation with my health and stuff, I constantly wake up. So, um, so I end up just waking up because of pain in my body and stuff. If I'm, I have to move around to um, negate the pain by moving onto another shoulder and then back to the other shoulder. So it just just a bit of respite, or I have to get up in time to have some medication to, you know, numb my body out, so I can have a bit of sleep. So I, um, excuse me. So one of the things I notice is that, like, when it comes to dreaming, is that you remember, you don't remember most of it. You remember the last few, uh, half an hour to an hour of it, the last moments of the dream, and it's. And if you're really tired and you, you you don't remember any of it sometimes, or you remember snippets of it, and so, or you you know if you're a lucid dreamer like me, you forget that you're actually dreaming. You're just there and you just go along with it. So today, the reason I want to talk about today, I'm lucid dreaming today and about dreaming and stories is that I had an I had a dream right. I had a really long dream. I woke up somewhere around about nine o'clock and then I woke up again. That's about eight. In the morning and I went back to sleep I woke up around about one o'clock then I went back to sleep again and I woke up somewhere between an after an hour and a half of sleeping where I noticed that I'd been um, you know that I'd been having this amazing dream where I was in the past in the 1950s UK or New Zealand and I was watching all these cool cars you know all the past cars and you watch all these beautifully rounded cars if you know if you especially if you look at the 19 um 20 style of cars the gangster cars or whatever you know we, we, that's what refers to us in our heads or the black taxis they have in a, um uk is the best way to describe those what those cars are they're very rounded and very um you know like the beatles right uh the beatles cars that we have Volkswagen beatles and so i'm watching all these streets i'm i'm, I'm sort of the you know the person that i'm dreaming is he's in this situation in a business and so I'm looking down the street and all these beautiful cars, and I note that these are these cars there. But in this universe that this dream's been happening in, there's just normal cars as well. But like 70s cars, where they're more box-shaped, right? Square, um, ang right-angle-shaped cars kind of thing, along with the other cars. 
And so I'm having this dream. It looks like I've been in it for a while and I'm a business person and so on. And next thing I know, I'm in Pi here somewhere, right? And, and then I decide, well, or this character decides that, hey, I'm in the past. So the best thing to do is set myself up uh, for these people to recognize me, recognize things, you know, set myself up for the future since now I'm, so now this guy's a Trump traveler out of the blue. So this character um, that I'm dreaming of is, he's like, okay, what I'll do is I'll tell a story that will become an iconic character in this place that later on when I, you know, when, when I come back to it in the future date, that people will recognize the story about being about my lineage and so on. And so these are the fun things that you can do and, you know, and things you can dream about if you're lucid dreaming that you can actually start, you know, I'll mess around with, with the story that I'm dreaming or the idea that I'm having right here, right now. And so the cool, that's the thing about t being able to time travel, right? If you're minded, like, you know, sci-fi minded like me, you can, you know, you think about like how, what would happen if I do this in the stream would affect my future. So it's pretty cool. And then, so the next thing I know is that I'm having a dream about being, being in a, um, in a pub, like a restaurant pub in the 19. 50s like in, in the bay of islands in the 1950s but there's hardly anybody around and then so the so you but the thing is that it's a pub in 1950s where everybody's mingling and stuff and you're sort of thinking ah i wake up and i realize that we can't do that right now yet here i am in my dream i could mix and mingle hammer things around talk to the waitresses talk to the people who are customers and I'm the my character in this dream is basically just a a handyman, right? And they say to the handyman, right? You're talking about people being unemployed, and so this is all. This is what happens when you're dreaming, when you're you're in your natural environment, your normal environment affects how you what you're dreaming about. So suddenly he realizes they're not able to pay me, and so the manager goes, "I'm." All right, so yeah, so I've asked Rico to join me on Facebook with through Messenger. So hopefully we're able to do that now. And yeah, so he's going to come in through Messenger and hopefully we can actually have a conversation with him and be able to, um, you know, converse with him. So I'm just going to turn this mic around because I've been trying to plan this for a while and be able to turn things around. Let me just move so we can actually talk. Say something so I can hear you, bud. All right, so right, this is how we're going to do this today. Let me just move all the way around. Slight leg. You got a slight leg. Okay, so hey, you want to post on uh, comic on, on the? Oh, it's it's a bit bright. Let me see if I can do something here to get the glare off. Yeah, it's a bit. How is that? I mean, I'm going to do the professional way soon, but I mean, I think this is this is one way of doing it. Uh, can you turn your mic up? I've got you on full blast on my side. Um, is that louder? Yep. Let me just see if I can turn mine yeah. up. Oh, oh, shoot, turn me, turn me down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'll just finish off of here on this one. So basically, you know. So your 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 um your normal everyday situation will, will have an effect on your dreams. So the idea is, you know, like the the, um, the lady was saying that the boss was saying that hey, you know, I can't pay you today, uh, but what can I do for you? Uh, you know, how can I you know thing? I said, well, the guy, you know, my character who I'm seeing the, this through and living this through in my dream, goes, well, you can give me a big drink. And he's, and he's trying to make a joke and he's talking about not a small drink, but a big drink with a lot of gusto. And he's trying to have a, have a dig at this girl that he likes, not have a dig at this girl, but he's trying to have a go, you know, try to, um, I don't know, convey his, his feelings towards this girl in, in a sexual way. And he's going, well, not a small drink, you know, but a big drink. And so... I sort of wake up after that. Oh no, then he, sorry, he walks around. He walks outside and there's people just walking around normal, like outside. And and then I, you know, he's whistling and he's doing some ho di ho ha 1950s song. And he realizes that, um, you know, this is, 
I'm living in the past. I'm here in the 1950s and he just carries on walking and I realize, well, I wake up at this point and go, huh. This is weird that I've just had a dream about where I could mix and mingle, go to a pub and have a drink and walk around with people and actually now woken up, I can't do that. So it's kind of strange that, you know, um, normalcy is quite different, you know, in this situation it's like a thing of the past right now because what we used to do and the enjoyment of freedoms we had, we just go, where you know like Rico could just come over and we could sit here and start talking and now we got to go do through this way where he's around the other side of the city you know and we're going to be doing it over messenger um do you want to come closer yeah do you want to come closer to the um, so you can fill up the screen with your face yeah but let me just yeah We'll we'll do a test drive of that um the Streamlabs thing that I was looking at doing, but I just the last two days has been crazy for me, so I have I haven't been able to really think it through and do a bit productively. Okay, so hey guys, if you're watching, I know there's uh, another person watching there. Can you please give me a wave to see um you know a comment to see if you are hearing both of us properly? Uh, otherwise, what you been up to, dude? Yeah. So, uh, what's I, I saw that you were playing a game for twelve hours. What was that like, and what were you playing? <laughs> it was Banner Saga, and um, my brother's staying with me. We used to play a lot of hot seat games back in the day. Yeah. We kind of take it in turns, like Jagged Alliance and XCOM, and so it's a little bit like that because you did kind of get a huge army, but then you can select your team, and then you got to battle out all these uh, grids and things. Um, so it's actually real fun, and we've been kind of doing it together, so it's been a good bonding in that sense. Okay. I just got... Uh, just, real oh, fun game. Epic. That's not going to work. Sorry, I was trying to get you get me on screen as well, but on your side, but... Uh, I can see you there. That's better. <laughs> yeah, just slightly <laughs> with the head. Oh, you can see that, I guess, um, on your screen. So, yeah, so... Um, how, when... So when was the last time you actually played that? Sorry, I just missed some of that. I, I never played it before. I had the whole saga, one, two, three, and, uh, one, two, and three. And so I'd been waiting to play it. I played it for like a couple of minutes at first and gave it a roll. Um, but I'd been fully, like you noticed, completely yep. addicted and uh, uh, putting in some serious time. But I read an article about it and it said this is one of the few games where I lost track of time. And as a game reviewer, that's how I know when I'm playing a good quality game. Yeah. Is it MMO, MMO, oh, MMO game or is it just a one-on-one uh, -on -one kind of thing? So is it called, uh, is it Banner World or Banner Wall? Banner Saga. Banner Saga. B-A-N-N-E-R? Like Bruce yeah. Banner? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the banners have the um, family story and emblem on them. Uh, right. Um, that's kind of how. <laughs> I did have to work on Wednesday though, so I'm, I'm an essential worker, but I only have to work one day um, for half day, so it's pretty good at the moment too. Nice to help people, so I didn't yeah. mind doing that. So that was an interesting thing that I did. Broke up my week a bit. Did you um have, okay. you, have you been watching any uh, like um TV shows? I mean, you've been playing all this um games as well, but have you been watching the TV shows as well? Yeah, <laughs> we started watching the uh, Kingdom. That's a zombie one, right? 
yeah, I was so impressed with it. Like, it's, right. uh, like Japanese manga style um, samurais and, you know, yeah. just with zombies. It's, it's yeah, it's really, the... It's the really, really good. Um, it's, yeah, yeah. it's South Korean. So, yeah, it's South Korean. No, I, I, uh, I, it's it's um, j um. Let me just think. I think it was based in Josai, so it's um, South Korean. If I remember oh. right, because I I um I posted yeah. about it because um. So it would be Menwa um style because I've been reading a couple of Menwa ma manga at the moment, but I, I read mature manga um Menwas. I mean, mangas and Menwas, but I watch every you know normal anime things. So I can't really start saying that this is the, what you should be watch, reading right now because some of the contents is not for every, you know, PG. Um, so the kingdom or kingdom? Yeah, the kingdom. Well, have you watched it yet? No, no. So there is, let me see. So there's a couple, there was one that was set in um, China, and then there was one um, with the same name, right, which what confused me at the start, and then there was one with, um, in, yeah, South Korea, and let me see, so, so it's fantasy, they haven't got much there, no, this is a different one, so that, that's what's com confusing, is there's so many different ones of these now, right now, um, with the same name. Yeah, so you got Kingdom. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Chinese or something, but uh, it's, yeah, recommended. Mm. But that's on, that's on Netflix, isn't it? Yeah, on Netflix. Two seasons. Um, yeah. We just got through season one. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the thing. It's a bit funny as well. Like, they um, they knock each other's heads off and stuff. And, like, um, like uh, that's a little bit over the top. And one of the guys is a bit Jackie Chan style. Yeah. Like, he drunk some ass and stuff, but, um, So, what are, you, what are you been doing? I'm just like, I slept all day. I've been basically keeping keeping things sorted with Incredible Girl, and we started that new um started a new little project for the Plunge comic book site. I mean Plunge business site, and trying to keep that going. And that takes I notice that like, it's doing live um live live streaming, which just takes about two hours hour and a half to two hours and then that's like 14 hours just taken over you know during a week and then so that's like a day and a half that i've, I've lost on working on a critical and then on top of that it takes me an hour and a half to two hours to do the one panel thing every day that i've started because i've got to write it as well as fix it all up and it's not as easy as it looks but because it looks simple when you just have it there but when you're actually doing it it takes about an hour and a half to two hours and so that's that's another 40 now. So that's basically, I lose about three days just of work by doing that, which I should have been spending on Incredible. So I had, I got behind on Incredible by a whole day because of that. But I mean, us doing this, um, I mean, by doing this li um, live streaming, it's been really fun keeping in contact with people. But it's also made me think about, um, you know, the different things that we've been doing uh, leading up into this. Like we started talking about movies and comics and TVs. We were going to do that every week, right? Like today's our Friday, which yeah. I, which I just realised is the day we get together and do this. But I've been, you know, been doing it just basically for a whole week straight out. It's Saturday today. No, it's Friday today. It's Saturday. <laughs> yeah, no, it's Friday. Is it? Oh shit! Oh, yeah, it's Friday. We lost track of that. Oh, it is our day then. Mm. Well done. Oh, I'm glad I got back a day in my week. Yeah, so we, <laughs> we're back on. Yeah. Um, are, you, are you finding with this lockdown? I lose track of time. Definitely. Yeah. No. I was supposed to put the rubbish out this morning and I forgot because I fell asleep finally. Because I was up for about almost 20 odd hours and I just couldn't sleep. I just, yeah, I couldn't force myself to sleep. And then at the end there, I was like, okay, I'm just going to put my head under the covers and hopefully they'll make me fall asleep. And I think somewhere around about nine o'clock this morning or seven o'clock this morning, I fell asleep. And I think a lot of people will be finding it the same thing. Because especially if you're in a, um, you know, in a group, a family environment, the stress of it is just probably going to just like, even though, the thing is that you go beyond that, that there's a point where you just go beyond tiredness 
and you just can't sleep, you know? That's true, yeah. And that's... Sometimes a productive time. Yeah. Good thinking time. Yeah, but also it can wear you out as well. And emotionally, you, you, you um, get... Um, you get a bit, uh, what is it called, where you... Cabin fever? Yeah, and you get tired of people, and you're short with them, you know? <laughs> Some people that's every day. Yeah. But more so, I think, with all the general stresses, and I, I, I kind of um, really, you know, worry about uh, family families with little kids, you know? Well, yeah, it'd be interesting to see or hear from a family how they're doing and what it's like, because it is quite different. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, and so I think that's why the, um, you know, the government's basically said, hey, take your kids out for a walk, just do, just so they're not, they're not become claustrophobic. And and I think that that's one thing that, I mean, I've always appreciated our, our freedom that we have in New Zealand. And I have, I mentioned that a lot because we now realize what happens when your freedom is taken away, where you can't just get out of the house, jump in a car and take off wherever you want. You know, and um, because of a pandemic of a situation like this, and um, which reminds me, I, I mean, a little while ago, um, a few years back, I wrote a story which I, you know, com it's totally completed where I did a whole bunch of little short stories and stuff, which was based in the world where New Zealand suffers from a fallout. So New Zealand has no part in the in, in the world in this uh, nuclear fallout, but because there's a war between the, uh, the worlds, we're a little. Uh, country that didn't do anything though you know what is that called the fallout of it the gray um the ashes that come down yeah well, so everyone, everyone nukes each other and yeah. then the leftover bad shit like comes over new zealand right yeah and so um and so it falls on and destroys uh, so what happens is the, um the men and and the older boys go out trying to find out if they can find some food and stuff after being locked up and they all there's, a, there's a, some sort of a something in in that fallout which basically kills them all instantly they all just boom they can't breathe they die they suck it you know they breed all this and, and then they die and now you've got a whole gen um all that's left is um uh, females um um uh, young girls uh babies um young bo you know boys that are still at home they they survived this and so you know and so you've got yeah, because they, they were all locked up inside, so they survived. They basically sealed off everything. They the air inside and stuff, they had generators and whatnot. Oh, no, no. They bas it was basically within a, like a couple of days it was all sorted. You know, like, I mean, it, the rain, it came down, and after that, people went outside, and those that remained inside were all right. And so there's this whole thing of generation of where these people grow up without uh, males there and stuff, and then they raise up children, uh, male boys and stuff, and... And sort of the whole idea of what happens in that situation, right? So, like, it's basically like, how do you, um, how do you recreate a world, it um, you know, the whole world after that's happened? And so that was like something like about. Time to be a, a surviving male. Yeah, and some basically, and the other thing is, what happens when food starts running out? Because all the all the everything's destroyed outside, so all you have is canned goods and stuff, and so this sort of thing, like. Yeah, well, it's it's a, it's basically you have tribes um village like because I said in, in because being from Mordor I said in Mordor and Kaukau and Bay of Islands, so you have people teams of people in um you know from like the Bay of Islands coming into Mordor and Kaukau looking for food, so they're on the hunt right, and that sort of re really f um, makes you know sort of uh, when I was writing I was thinking like okay well how do they deal with it how do they survive, how do they um, continue the the gene pool. And yeah, so it was it was written in the sense that like you had that start, and it's written from a girl's young girl's teenage girl's point of view where she's writing out a diary of this is what happened and so on, and then she grows up into an elder and a uh, you know um, elder states person, and she's a grandmother now, and then her stories she writes all these little stories, she grabs all these little clippings of the past, getting getting together like cookbooks and how to do gardening and all this stuff. But it's quite interesting when you sort of look at that. I mean, we've got so many books written like that, but I was trying to, when I was writing, I was like thinking, what would, you know, what would happen in that situation? And we That's never... pretty cool. You should have put the story out there. Oh, it's, it's already out there, but I, I'm, I'm going to put it as a comic book sometime when I finish it. Because it's also a, um, a picture book as well for young kids. So it's like, it's, it's all this into one little graphic novel where you actually have like uh, picture books, comic books, 
and news news um, you know news magazine items, uh, television reports, and uh, headlines and all this all into one little trade paperback kind of thing storyline. But yeah, so it's kind of talking about freedom. So like you know you're not able to basically do what you want. And I noticed that um, my sister was putting um, online about you know what what is the first thing that you want to do when this lockdown is over. So what would what is the first thing you want to do? I'd probably just stay inside and continue playing the game. Yeah. When you can, when the door, you know, when the lockdown's over, you're just gonna stay home. I probably like. Uh, I mean, the interesting thing is, as your world shrinks, you need less other stuff. Yeah. Anyway, I guess it's nice to be able to go down the road and buy an ice cream from the shop. But like, the smaller your world is, the smaller you need. Like, you don't need some of the other stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's lots of comics I've been betting on recently and stuff. So, yeah. I mean, that would come back. Yeah. Um, I suppose. Um, it would be nice to see your friends, but at the same time, I like seeing my friends and playing, you know, trivia games or you know, doing things like that. And so it's kind of quite secular anyway. Yeah. Um, But yeah. I'm sure our freedoms will come back. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's the cool thing about it. I mean, for me, it's just to be able to go into town, right? And just go and talk to all the people and all the business people that I always talk to, go and hang out with my friends and just say, hey, how was it during that time you guys were locked away? Go into the shops and see what I want to look at uh, buying, you know, or think about buying or whatever. What I thought. Yeah. Well, one of the first things when they started shutting up earlier, yeah. I was disappointed the op shops were closed. Yeah. Well, well that's what little old ladies is the right thing to do. I yeah. didn't get angry and miss it, but yeah. like I didn't notice it first. I was like, oh man, I yeah. like going there on my lunch break. Yeah. But fair enough. Yeah. They're the ones with the most right. Exactly. And I think that's. Most of them are Yeah. And they're volunteers, you're right. They're all volunteers. Yeah, yeah. So, so they deserve to be home and safe. So, but yeah. I did miss that, so I'll be excited to get that back. Hmm. Did, Did you, you notice that as well? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I think um, for me, it's just to hang out with my friends, right? Just to just converse and stuff. So I've I've kept up with that with by phone calls, you know, just yeah. Skype, uh, Messenger, phone, just saying, hey, how are you doing? Is there anything I could do for you? Are you all right for food? You know, how are you handling the stress? And everybody's basically doing well, you know, just using the time um, positively. Uh, one of them's painting their ha rooms in the house, you know. Uh, my my mum. A lot of productive people there. Yeah, uh, my parents are out there, um, you know, um, cleaning up and growing, uh, putting more more seeds in the ground to grow some more food, you know, and stuff like that. So I think one thing I'm really grateful for is our frontline staff, you know, like our no doctors and nurses. Uh, you know, our posties, our police, ambulance people, and just, you know, firemen, just making sure, I mean, every time I hear hear the, because, you know, because living next to the main road, I hear the, uh, you know, being in a city like ours, you can always hear um, what um, the cops, right, the um, sirens, and you sort of, every time you hear it, you go, oh, I hope everybody's okay now, you know, I hope there's nothing major for them to do, they're okay, and even when being close to the hospital, you're going to go, well, well, hopefully that's not one of those cases. <laughs> you know? Well, it seems at the moment, I know it can escalate fast, but yeah. at the moment it's like 16 people in hospital. And so with all our hospitals in our country, it's, I think it's pretty well managed. Yeah, that's a, that's a uh, thing. I mean, even if they had 100 cases, surely you know, hospitals across New Zealand can handle 100 people. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're all keeping away. We're not out hurting ourselves from you know, yeah. drinking on the weekends and the F&A and E. And so I think, you know, like at the moment, it's managed pretty well. And so hopefully with the hospital side of things, like it's not too stressful for them. Mm. I mean, it sucks they have to go to work every day to help everyone. Yeah. But, I mean, other than that. Yeah, but you mentioned about like drinking in the weekends and going ending up with hospitals. So that's that's going to be that's something going to be interesting because you got like four weeks of people being, you know, a month of people being locked up in their homes and not being able to party and stuff. I wonder if they're going to suddenly like binge out, you know, and just hard out. Yeah, well, they normally, on the weekend, on Fridays and Saturdays, there often is, like, lots of people at A&E due mm. to party-related 
of incidents and injuries. Um, so uh, they definitely probably notice that, and they'll definitely, yeah, you're right, if they all go hard, mm. probably will, will be a few. Or would, or, would it, or would it be the other side where people are like, no, no, I'm just going to give it another week. <laughs> and, you know. Well, yeah, little things there. Eh? Mm. <laughs> they might well just get excited to be able to go to the supermarket again. Yeah, take the whole family out. Hey, um, so one of the things I was going to talk about today is, um, where are we here? Is, because we're talking, um, I was you know, the main thing today is about um, dreams. So do, do you remember watching, um, oh, come on, hold on. Bit of a stall there, oh, hold on, sorry. Um, let me just shrink this down a bit and get you back on. Yeah, so do you, did you ever watch um, Friday the 13th by Nightmare on Elm Street? No, not Jason. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, 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 you're right, you're right. No, no, sorry. Nightmare on Elm Street. Nightmare? Yeah, well, of course, yeah. The Dream with, Warriors. Yeah, with Freddy Krueger. Nightmare on Elm Street, so yeah. It's what, um, so, for, you know, everybody's probably seen it. If you haven't seen it, um, Nightmare on Elm Street is basically Freddy Krueger, uh, a person who, um, who gets burnt alive in a house or something and then is able to go through people's dreams has knives of uh, leather glove knives for fingers basically um well he wears a glove right a finger glove yeah where it's a yeah so yeah and so the, the so he turns out and then he's like he makes a glove a leather glove with knives as fingers nails whatever and so he's able to go through people's um, children's minds, like their dreams, and kill them in their dreams. So if you die in the dream, you die for real. So this is back in 1984. Now, around about that time, there's this whole thing about fear about children being hurt and, and being kidnapped and stuff across America. So there was a whole lot of things, like, like you said, Jay, uh, Friday the 13th with Jason. And there were so many, like there's about six different movies that came out. And then there was Freddy vs. Jason movie as well. Do you remember watching that? Yeah, they got pretty bad. They, they got pretty bad after all. Freddy vs. Jason wasn't terrible. Mm. Jason X, that was bad. Is it the one with him in space? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was kind of funny, but bad. <laughs> so Robert England, he's like he's the most he's like the most iconic person when it comes to horror, and he was. Um, he also he had his anthology series called Freddy's Nightmares, where there's about 44 episodes of, uh, I think it was 22, 20, uh, half an hour or hour long uh, TV shows, TV episodes, sorry, that went for about two years, 44 episodes for I about... I didn't even know about that. Yeah. I'll have to try that out. I saw some of that. So, you know, now's the time to binge on stuff if you're into horror. So there's about 44 episodes, and he does the narration of it. And then there was another one that came out on top of that. Well, there was Friday the 13th, the series. And that's a pretty well-regarded series. That, was, that went on for about three years with 72 episodes. And uh, let me see how many, how many seasons. Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street? Friday the 13th, the series. So that's Jason. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, there's that one. It, I think they called it the series. I don't know why this was Friday the 13th. This was what got me confused when I was when I said that. But if I remember right, this is about like um, uh, lost tri uh, lost items, satanic items, where you... Um, it's about an antique store. So there's these people that... Let me just get this so I can see it bigger. So it's about two young antique store owners must recover cursed antiques. So... It is a good show. It just you know, we it was it used to be on TV here in New Zealand on Friday nights, if I remember right. So, it was. It's, I yeah, it's really worthwhile watching. It's because it's it's like each episode is about a different um, uh, antique item. So they have this the the whole idea of these cursed items and the effect on people, and so you have 
there's a really cool thing because it, you know there's just 72 items so they basically have to go hunt for them and the story the, the really good stories so it's quite it's really well regarded the um series it's an hour long episode so they're about 44 episodes, um, minutes long each so three seasons it's won a couple of emmys uh, nominated won a couple of awards um but what i was going to mention was on nightmare on elm street the original one had johnny depp in it and um yeah so he was he must have been like very young there um uh, yeah. so who else so this of course it's written by them you know one of the best uh Wes craven now did Wes craven do um i know what you did last summer Let me just check. I just want to. Yeah, so there was three wins for the uh, for the original one, uh, the le last house on the left. Let's, so where are we? My soldier take was one of the um, more recent ones. The hills have eyes. Uh, yeah, his characters. So he 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 must have done the original there. Uh, the people next door. Do you ever remember that, seeing that? Yeah. Uh, I saw so many horrors, so I, I probably have seen it. What's the synopsis of that? So a, su a successful cartoonist is able to f physically materialize his wildest fantasies. Cool. Yeah, it's a comedy nice. fantasy. It's a half an hour episode, a se uh, series. It's only 10 episodes. So, hey, talking about comic books, cartoonists, right? So, yeah. Yeah. It's gonna have, yeah, I'm going to have to check that out. So... The other one, and he's the creator of that as well. So you can see he dabbled in, you know, comic books early on as well as part of that. So Shocker, do you ever remember watching Shocker? Shocker? No. <laughs> okay. Shocker is one of my, one of my favorite films because it's got Megadeth doing the song in it. No more Mr. Nice Guy. No. Okay. So Shocker is about a... Yep. So Shoko is about after being sent to the electric chair, a serial killer uses oh, another serial killer oh, they, uses that sounds familiar, actually. yeah uses electricity to come back from the dead and carry out his vengeance on the football player who turned him into the cops. So oh, yeah. the soundtrack is amazing for this. It's it's got one of the best soundtracks, heavy metal soundtracks. Uh, no more Mr. Nice Guy was the uh, was the tagline for it. Uh, let me see. It's got Mitch Pal Palagi. Do you remember Mitch? He's from um, X X. Uh, no, what's it called? X. Um, the X something. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's the he's X. Uh, the X Files. He's one of the main supporting characters in X Files. Yeah. Yep. Okay, Mitch Palagi. Mitch so he's Horace Pinker. He's the main character on uh, main. He's the villain on um, Shocker, which came out in nineteen eighty nine. Oh yeah, yeah, he was also Skinner in X Files. That's right. I couldn't remember his name in there. So he's also an American uh, horror story, and a whole bunch of bunch of. He was a Sons of Anarchy. Um, let me see, Supernatural. He's been in there as as well. Um, Human Target, he was pretty cool in that. I loved Human Target, which is another um, comic book. Human Target was from, uh, yeah, that was from comic book, yeah. Yeah, so that's a pretty cool series to um, watch as well. Where a guy can basically, um, it's 25 episodes, a guy can turn himself into any person. So a unique bodyguard protects his clients by secretly infiltrating their lives in order to draw out uh, and eliminate threats. So it's it's a really cool show. And it's got... um. Uh, Mark Valley as Christopher Chance, um, and also Chi McBride as Winston. Chi's an awesome um, actor, and also one of the other ones is Elsa Pucci, who's uh, Indira Varma. Now, if I remember Indira Varma, she's an Indian, a British, uh, UK Indian actress who's been in a few things as well. Um, let me see. 
she's in she's been in Dragon Age Inquisition, Exodus, Gods and um, Gods and Kings, Rome, uh, for life is the most recent one, Carnival Row. She was in the most recent Carnival Row series. That, that was good, Carnival Row. Right? It was. Yeah. I'm excited to see that the second series, man. That was really good. You're right. And yeah, that's pretty intense times. And she was also in Game of Thrones at Ilaria Sand. Yeah. I'm surprised at how much some of these um, actors who are in the background and some things or support characters yeah, have massive careers that you don't realize. Yeah, and that's the cool thing. And so people, you know, and then, like, she was a great character. She played a real, real good villain in, uh, in, in um, because she's trying to look, um, make a, make her children be the next leaders of her, you know. What is it? Do you remember what, um, the desert people were called? Oh, the Deltraki? No, not the, those ones, the uh, next ones, the ones that are like the Arab people. Um, oh, no, I don't. Not off the top of my head. <laughs> okay, so let me see. So, yeah, the Shocker, back to Shocker, it's a, um, I'm just going to play this here for, um, for a bit here just to see. If we can get this trailer working. Oh, went too far. Let me get back. Oh, you watch the trailer. Yeah. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it properly, uh, but I'm going to try. Um, so, this is a trailer for Shocker. If I can get it going. I'm going to just turn the light off here for a second. Man, it's really dark in here now with the light off. All right, let's see. Come to Papa. Can you see it on your screen? to the execution of Horace Pinker, whose unspeakable atrocities have horrified the people of this great state. He stands convicted of 52 counts of aggravated assault, 23 counts of armed robbery, and 37 counts of murder in the first degree. Prisoner, have any final words? What do you reckon? That show is pretty cool. Yeah, it's it is it's. it's cool. it, I, I thought I watched it. Like the, it is a really well written story. I mean, movie. It's really really good. I I um I, and like I said, it's got Megadeth doing the No More Mystic Nice Guy from um, Alice Cooper's song. And um yeah, it's quite it's quite brilliant. And I you know and it's it's kind of like. You know, back in the day, you could just do what, write a story and not worry about any sort of anything and just write a good movie, right? Good story, good movie and stuff. Uh, what, so, let me see. If I can find um, a trailer for the, for the other one I mentioned, um, Nightmare. Here we go. If you can watch, let's see if you can check out this one. This is a... Um, Friday the 13th, the series. So a bit different tonight, guys, with a whole bunch of uh, movies, trailers, and... Anything. 
afraid with. My God, I told you not to touch anything. Mary, you really should listen to your mother. She's not my mother. My real mother's dead. Are you going to let her stand here and talk to me like this? No, uh, of course not. Now, Mary. You haven't heard the end of this when you're leaving. Let her look around a bit. She'll be good. Won't you, honey? Let's have a look. What do you reckon? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that reminds me of Child's Play, right? So Child's Play, uh, um, just as soon as adults started talking, I was like, oh, it's Child's Play. Did you ever watch Child's Play? Hey, um, I've just, nice I'll, um, Rick and Morty's coming back on the 6th of May, or 3rd of May. Oh, thank God. They keep, they keep us waiting too long, those guys. Well, it's, it's, it's not like a, a standard, um, is that you or me? No, it's me. Okay. It's <laughs> yeah. So, Nick. so this is an official trailer Sorry, for... Nick official trailer for the other five i mean it's talking about like rick and morty it there's so many um and this it's a, such a huge animation style because of all the different lines and stuff compared to normal you know you just do the outline and you're done whereas rick and morty has so many different layers to it which is why you know i mean it's such a good series art wise and it's also such a good series in quality of writing and you can keep watching it over and over again Yeah. Because I, the, the first chunk we got, like every story was cohesive and, and big. But then I found that the, I have to go back and try the latest one again. Because mm. I felt like the stories weren't quite of the same caliber. And it was still fun. Yeah. Uh, I just didn't get as much out of it. Well, I think it was because he was going through a really horrible um, divorce situation or breakup. And that's something that really, um, I think. A lot of people don't understand is like when you actually going through sort of um and I, I mentioned this about you know before about not you you got to be in the right space in your head i think it was just the other day i was mentioning to actually work on something otherwise you're going to put in things that you wish you had never put in later on when you look back on it and it's and that's what you hear about people regretting being in um certain uh, doing certain um, movies because they weren't you know that they later later regret doing because at the time they really needed the money or they were just like weren't thinking straight and they made the wrong choices. I think we've all been there. Hmm. All right, let's have a look at this trailer they got for um, the latest Mick, Rick and uh, Morty. Give me a sec. Is that the same year I was? 
I'm not sure. It's just uh, I I haven't seen it yet myself. I just saw it pop across on IMDb. So I guess we could, you know, have you already seen it or? Um, I've seen it. That was worth watching. Um, mm. I saw a samurai one. I'm not sure whether this is a trailer or not. It was yeah. Good. All right. Let's see. Look. It's like a real, I mean, it's such a gift, right? Having um, Rick and Morty Are you back. loving TV's best new sci-fi thriller devs, but secretly hoping the spooky tech isn't possible in Ooh. real life? Well, guess what? Silly IMDb started playing their own thing. Hey, Tama. Hey, David. Good, man. Yeah. The video I found that came up the other day was, um, I put it on the New Zealand comedy timeline. Yeah. Yeah, they look like, um, I mean, this looks like, um, what you might call it, Voltron Rick. <laughs> Can you see that on the screen there? Yeah. yeah. Voltron I Rick. See snowball there as well. Snowball? Is Snowball the cat or what? I can't remember. So, what's the other thing we got here? The Mecha Dog. Right. Ah, oh, yes, yes. That is a that was a good one. I enjoyed that. I mean, I've seen the whole se um the yeah, whole. That was a good I've seen the whole three seasons twice, I think, or maybe some episodes th three times, because it's just, just such a good series. Um. I've watched Pickle Rick many times. <laughs> yeah. Have you read the comics? Mm. There's some the real, the yeah. There's some really good stories by the original writer of it, like not of um not Dan Harmon or anything like that, but actual uh, the comic guy who actually they got in professionally to do the first series and stuff. When he writes, it's really good. When anybody else writes, it's just trash. There's some short stories. Uh, some some people do is just it's just like why do you even bother writing this? You don't even understand the character, or you don't even get the nuances. I I, uh, Carry on. I I've, I've read one that I read one that was actually pretty good. It was on form with the TV. Yeah. Uh, it was about a robot helper for Morty or something, and he became a millionaire. Yeah. And then, yeah, that was good. So I was a bit, a little bit I've read, but I need to get into it. Yeah. Rick and Morty is pretty much full quality. It is. Yeah, and that's why when when the, when they had these like side writers, freelance writers come and write some stuff, they just it's like they're writing against it. Like they're just doing it like, oh, I have to, I get some money for this and I'll write it. And then like, but then they like write trash on it. But I think that's why like Oni is the company that actually does that, if I remember right. Or IDW and they're, they're in shutdown mode, dude. Did you notice that? Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but like IDW who, um, um, sorry, Oni bought out IDW and um, they also... Um, let me just check here. Where are we? Bleeding full. 
get that out of the thing. So on the comic book news scene, like um, Lion Forge Labs, which is which uh, started about a few years back, and they're all about diversity and inclusivity. Uh, joined up later with Oni, and now they they've just shut down. That's it. Um, the workers laid off, and they're gone. Did they buy it, Oni? Yeah, Oni bought them out. Bought them. Because they're doing really bad. No, no. Um, um, IDW got um, bought by IDW. IDW has lost thirty million dollars, so they'll be next on the block. Comic book wise, it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they do Transformers. They do Transformers uh, series. Um, let me see. Where are we? G.I. Joe's. They did Mask. Yeah, Mask is... Red Sonja? No, Red Sonja is done... Was it back in the day? But Red Sonja is done by Dynamite now. Oh, Dynamite. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me see. So, I wonder if they can. They've got a search here. Line Forge. Well, I say that a lot of them are in the hard times at the moment with what's going on, but I mean, that's just the same as everyone else. Yeah. I mean, I think at the moment, um, it's really like the, the great equalizer of people because all the celebrities are doing normal stuff like <laughs> press ups on like home videos. <laughs> yeah. and Socializing with their board with their lost inside. Yeah. And so we're, we're all kind of on the same shoes at the moment. And yeah. For the companies and that rely on their income, everyone's fucked. Yeah. And some, oh, sorry. Yeah. We're in, but um, everyone's, you know, in a bit of hard times, really, if they can't get their income and they're not getting support. So mm. I suppose. Okay. So this is what they said about, um, I think it was about a year ago. Um, yeah. Almost a year ago, May 13th last year. Uh, Abby Green wrote about it. He's on about a line forge on Bleeding Fool. Uh, the New York Times wrote an unclear piece about Oni and Line Forge's plans to merge their business together. So, hoping to stand out in a crowded market dominated by the corporate giants DC Comics and Marvel um, Comics, smaller smaller publishers are adopting new business strategies to better complete compete. In the latest example, two independent publishers, Line Forge and Oni, announced on Wednesday that they they would merge. The move, the companies say, will strengthen their library of original comics and graphic novels and help them to leverage the characters on other media platforms, including animation and movie and film. Now, so this is basically, you know, then they then they realized that they couldn't compete. They, um, you know, financially that it, that the merger was really bad because um, Line Forge's comics weren't selling uh, to what they were expecting and. And maybe they cooked the books, who knows, to get into Oni. And then Oni then got into, uh, with them, um, joined up with, if I remember, IDW. They both of them joined up with IDW. And IDW is in huge trouble right now, right? Um, IDW had a, a couple of their TV shows being picked up by Netflix, but they're not, uh, they're not, here we go. So... Here we go. Further evidence that uh, IDW Publishing is going downhill. This was a month, um, two months ago. So they were saying the Associated Press re released a report on IW's earnings as of last year, and they compute continue to look pretty bad. Um, and so IDW Holdings Incorporated, I OTC Pink, IDWM, an integrated media company today reported a fourth quarter net loss per share of two dollars twenty nine cents on revenue of three point, uh, sorry, revenue of thirty three point nine million and a full fiscal year net loss per share of three dollars ninety on revenue of sixty three, sixty two thousand sixty two point six million for the three months and twelve months ended thirty first of October last year. Despite this, the CEO um, Howard Jonas continues to act as though they're do doing peachy business and alleged two TV uh, TV deals are saving everything. So now we realize that um, their shows that they were getting onto I, um, Netflix one season and they're getting cancelled. So V Wars, um, have you watched that yet? Yeah, but that wasn't the best. Kind of lost interest. Did they push the whole diversity? Not bad actors. 
Yeah, did they push the whole diversity and, um, thing in there? Um, not, not terribly. It just wasn't the best story. Like, it could have been better. They had a lot of potential. Yeah. <laughs> got a bit bored. I guess they had a little bit of uh, political stuff because it was kind of the us versus them mm. kind of thing. And then they're wanting to be, why can't we just exist as vampires? And you leave us alone and we'll leave you alone. So, I mean, uh, it had a little bit of political stuff, but not too much. It yeah. just wasn't the most interesting story. It had this whole big potential of going really dark and violent, and then it... And then what, sorry? Sorry about that, guys. We just lost uh, Rico there for a bit. I'm getting him back now. Hopefully, are we here? Are we there yet? Hey, bud. No. Right. Hopefully, we got him. We'll get him back soon. Sounds like we might have him back. Hello. Hey, sorry, man. What happened there? We lost you. Did not. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm moving on to bounding into comics. So here we go. Let me see what we got on you. Okay, so let me find the IDW thing. Anyway, yeah, so B-Wars and all that, you know, scrambling to get past because I... I, I People, I mean, they, they tend to forget that story is what draws people in and characters, right? You can have the best names in Hollywood being in a movie or TV show. And if the story is crap, you've just wasted your $50 million in getting oh, a couple of million dollars on hiring that actor. And the actor doesn't mind if the movie's, the actor doesn't mind if the movie's trash, right? He doesn't care. He's got his money. He's doing it. Yeah, he's paid. He walks off. Doesn't matter if it's totally trash. That's why you get movies like, um, you know, Charlie, Charlie's Angels and stuff, and they can do whatever they want to do in that. But at the end of the day, the people who made the movie, production team and all that, the director doesn't care because they got their money, right? Doesn't matter if it fails, doesn't matter if it's ruined forever, the whole uh, franchise, but they just got their money and they walk away. They can say, oh, did a good job, did a good job. Uh, you know, this is all your fault, it's failed. But they, get, they got the bank account full. Um, sure. now, so there's new rumors that, uh, Amber Heard could be removed from Aquaman 2. I think that, I think that's a rough. She did a good job. Yeah, but, um, there's a whole lot of things coming out. I mean, yeah. The court case. Yeah, the home stuff. Yeah, yeah. but you gotta, like, I mean, people are people. Like, mm -hmm. everyone, yeah, like, yeah. she's doing her job, and her job on screen was good. It was on point. That's true. And I don't know problem with that she played the character well yeah so that's that's been affected by the fact that she tried to destroy uh and it's the court case is going on and they've um the uh the it's a shame it's a shame that you know she's done bad stuff for herself but i don't think yeah. depending on the character she's established um why should people be so anti that oh like, but Jason Momoa did a great job he did a shit job of conan he did a great <laughs> job of that you know like yeah. They yeah, but we, we, we talk, but we talk about two different things. So you try to get him off anything else, like John uh, Johnny Depp, on anything that he was part of. So the thing is, like, what's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? So that's. Well, were, they, were they trying to take Johnny Depp off stuff? Yeah, he he was going to Paris to Caribbean. He's going to lose that. They were try, uh, she, I, think, I think people are just too sensitive, really. Oh no, no, it wasn't. It, it wasn't people. It was that, that she was using this whole uh, domestic violence thing that she's supposedly now seen as the perpetrator in the courts and from uh, witnesses who are there. Uh, that, um, but what happened was that she was trying to um, get him off projects that he was part of, like the Harry, Harry Potter one. What was that, um, that series, the second one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so she was trying to get him... He, he, he was like a yeah. Could take him 
Yeah, so she was. They were. She was trying to levy her all her political movement into getting him off any of his stuff. So the thing is, like, well, if she did that, then why isn't it good for her to be off other stuff as well? So. Well, I mean, like, I think realistically, they just need to be divorced, don't they? And I mean, the lesson for all of us people watching, or even the companies involved, yeah. is maybe we need to do a better job at being married and marry the right people, like, rather yeah. than try to like ruin one another's life. Shit. Yeah. Well, they reckon that she was she's a gold digger, and, and it seems like she is because of what she's doing. But hey, marriage. Yeah, but if she's working, if she's doing movies and working and earning her money, then yeah, she's probably rich enough where she's good anyway. Yeah. Yeah, like they just need to separate and move on. They make people try and like ruin each other. That's the thing. Eh? It's like, yeah, I've been through that, so I'm like, you do your thing, I'll do my thing. Let's go on. It can be amicable, but like when you're in such a in the public eye, it's a different situation where people try to use clickbait and use it to make more money for themselves. Because she tried to be the spokesman for uh, domestic violence. She got um, she used this to get her as a uh, huge, huge uh, roles. All right, so maybe she was able to get um, the Aquaman role as Mira because of the levying for that. No, I don't. I think so, I mean, that's what I mean. Right. Well, that's the thing that comes down to is like you got to like um you got to put the artists apart from their physical and and their own thing until that person sort of tries to push it onto the art art they do, and this is where I have a problem is well, when maybe, but, yeah. But if she ends up in jail for what she does, then that's fair enough. That's different, but that's nothing to do with her acting career. Right. There's like, messy, like but it, it's, yeah. You know, it's a hard job not to jump on the bandwagon. I mean, everyone's got an opinion, fair enough. But, I mean, at the end of the day, if we have an opinion, does that change her getting movie roles and stuff from auditions? Mm. I, I don't think it should. Yeah, I mean, unless you ends up, you know. Yeah, unless unless there's a whole, you know, like you said, if she goes into court, um, like loses in court and goes to, goes to jail, well, she's going to lose her work anyway. So it's really, not, in the end, it's not really up to us. But I like how, I mean, I don't, I don't like how she used the um the media to to try to um, you know, go after Depp's career and his whole earning. Like we're talking about earning, right? Work. So she went after the workload. Yeah. And try to, and they try to push for, you know, because everybody's like, no, no, Johnny's so bad, get him off, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean. And then they were going to do a, like a younger version where another actor and it's like, yeah, but he, he is Pirates of the Caribbean. Nobody's going to watch Pirates of the Caribbean without Johnny Depp. I like Orlando Bloom. Yeah, he was fun. Yeah. I like Jack Sparrow. Yeah, but J without Jack Sparrow, uh, you kind of. Keira Knightley, she was all good. Yeah. But he's 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 the he's the character that drives it. I mean, without his humor in it, I don't think. Yeah, you could probably. I think, I think they 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 get it that way. Mm. Like the first movie, you didn't have to think Jack Sparrow was a you know a cheaper character. Maybe he'd pop up as like he could have been like the Danny DeVito of it, and they could have kept the other guys as the main guys. Yeah. And they decided just right. They always do this with things, and it kind of ruins them. They make someone like oh. Like, everyone likes Jack Sparrow, make everything, you know? Yeah. And some of his scenes were, like, he's funny, yes. Yeah. And his character was kind of cool, but, like, some of his things are just like, Jesus Christ, mm. you know, give us the movie. Don't give us Jack Sparrow running around being a dick. Yeah, that's true. And that's, like, like you said, yeah, back, get back to the story. Hmm. The first one had a story. The others, not so much. Yeah. Now, um... Off that one, let me just off um, Amber Heard. I mean, like, it's, I don't mind her being in as Mira because it was hey back to being a good. Um, it, it's all about the uh, role, right, and the character. But I mean, of course, it's just an, they always can replace someone. Now, I want to. There's this rumor that um, Black Widow could be released straight to streaming. What do you think about that? Uh, yeah, there's a rumor that Scarlett uh, Johansson's Black Widow could be released straight to streaming. Oh, yes, I've heard about that. Well, that could be, I mean, at the moment, that's all they can do, so it would be nice. I 
So the problem there is, if that happens, right, there's hundreds of millions of dollars, maybe even up to a billion dollars of loss of revenue by going streaming. Un yeah, unless unless exactly unless they do a pay per view thing. Yeah, well, I think we should do the pay per view. I mean, maybe this is the shape of things to come. Maybe yeah. like everything's going to streaming now anyway. A lot of us stay at home anyway rather than yeah. the movie theaters. Yeah. And so, uh, I mean, it's a bit of a test run. It's unfortunate, but I mean, with the current, everyone's losing money at the moment in some regard. Mm. You know, just, or losing opportunity to make money. And so I guess they've just got to try and find a way. It'd be a good testing ground. And they were ready to go. And so it'd be nice to have the movie. I'd pay for it. Yeah. I'd enjoy it at home. Yeah, because you, but I mean, the loss there is that you're going to see it on like a, what, like a, geez, is it like a, hum, how big, how big, it's like 50 foot, something like that. Is it 50 foot, the theaters, the cinema screen compared to like a 40, uh, 40 well, inch? But yeah, yeah you and you could. Have... You must have on the big sound. Yeah. It's, 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 but, I mean, they, they, you can't do it. You know, Bloodshot was the same. Yeah. They had, what, like three days or four days at the theaters before they locked up? Yeah, that's and what I'm bringing up. The same unfortunate experience. Yeah, that's what I'm bringing up here because I talked about Bloodshot the other day. Uh, and basically, how much money it lost. Uh, because now it was made for about 45 millions. Because it's in the cinemas for only three days, it only made about um, 30 million. So there's a 15 million they have to actually make up to recover it. But you know what, for a couple of days, that's a pretty damn good effort. Exactly. It's not that they can't make more money on the back end. Yeah, exactly. And, and from the consensus, a lot of people said it was a very good lead up movie for the Valiant Universe. Mm, mm. And it set some good groundwork. Exactly. And so you could have a whole thing there with that. Now, um, the um, talking about Valiant, Valiant was was relying heavily on this money, on this profit, to help it go into the the rest of the cinema cinematic um thing for their um their uh, comics, right? So, because of um the virus and stuff affecting their sales, it's gonna if, if they don't if they don't find a stream a streamer straight away to be able to sell this to, right? Uh, and to garner some money in or wait until this is all over and go back to the cinema again they're in a huge loss as a company as a publisher right but i think the investors and the people who support it are going to be seeing this all over the place at the moment with certain films like black widow and they're going to have to look at it a different way anyway like maybe they could rely on box office takings but now it's a different situation they'll all be losing money anyway yeah and so they'll have to just review it differently i don't think yeah, and, uh, and the guys behind Valiant are pushing it really hard at the moment, and so I think even if it does take a loss, they'll continue to push, which will be good. Yeah, so um, I, mean, I hope they survive. So talking about Valiant, so they've got this um, the former Marvel editor and who's the in charge of um, Valiant has said this on um, on the eighteenth of. 18th of um and this is the weird thing right so this she's 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 the editor of um valiant she's in charge there heather antos she said well f capitalism f these companies even if i could afford to travel again after this i couldn't i wouldn't use them so the weird thing is like having making a multi-million dollar movie and you you, you rely on the profits of that to bankroll the next lot of movies, to bankroll your own pocketbook so you can be kept fed. She doesn't like capitalism, even though she gets, it's capitalism that pays for her income, right? And you you work in banking, right? And you, you're a finance person. So tell me, what do you think about these, of these I was going to say idiots, but these people who, who are so anti-capitalism, yet their whole thing is to earn a living, to be able to survive. the fact that you want to make money is silly, but I mean as an artist they want to create like what you do and so they're 
they're trying to put out a story, a character, and entertainment. Because ultimately, actors want to entertain people more than make money, generally. That's why they want to do it. Artists want to create art rather than make money. Yeah. And so, I mean, some of these companies probably do want to give back more than they want to reap reward. Yeah. And so, it, it, you know, I don't think it's completely unhealthy. I mean, obviously, she's got to account for somebody and she's got to, you know, look at the figures and care about them. Um, but what I was going to say about the whole Rick and Morty thing is, like, a lot of these companies are growing so big yeah. and they're trying to expand it. One runaway successor, Rick and Morty is really successful. It can generate heaps of profit or, or its merchandise is real popular or its comics are real popular. Why do they need to roll a whole company behind it and make more products instead of focusing on the one thing that succeeds? You know, like, why not just be a one-show pony and be really successful? And, you know, you don't have to grow a really big team. You don't have to buy 10 buildings to run your corporation when you could just, you know, yeah. Do your Rick and Morty stuff. Yeah. Because uh, Rick and Morty, I'm pretty sure, is making enough money where it could fund its own business, it could fund its own products and yeah. what it's doing. Because people love it. But instead, they create things like, you said, Sea Wars, which wasn't a success, yeah. which had good actors in it. It wasn't terrible, it had potential. Yeah. So why try and make that be the same success? It can't mm. be. Walking Dead was a surprise success. Yeah. A lot of the actors on there have to voluntarily ask to get themselves killed to come off the show because just keeps going and going. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if they, if they just stick to Walking Dead, are they going to lose money? No. You know? Mm. And other things ride on Walking Dead, yes. But yeah. not every product they make is going to be a Walking Dead. Right. And, yeah. and but that's... So, so she... That's so she goes on to say, no one pursues comics for big, uh, some big pay paycheck. Yet, then why pursue something and work hard at it if you're not going to use that to um, survive on? I think... It's it's kind of this really, you know. Is she, is she like the marketing person? Or no, she's the boss. CEO, or... She's basically the CEO the of boss. um of Valen Comics. Oh, she's the editor there, right? She's like one of the main editors there. So as a creative person, like you can kind of appreciate it. Like they're just doing that. They want to just get their work out there. They want to put out the best story they can. They don't yeah. care about the politics and the big books. I'm sure someone does that. Yeah. It's... I mean, but, probably the editor doesn't have that much standing to how much money they put into it and things anyway. Yeah. But, I mean, editors are someone there who makes sure that you, you, you know, your, your work is in line with your universe that you're working in, that you're not putting in something that doesn't exist in that universe, that you've created, and that you... Quality. Yeah, that, that everything is linked. But then you go, well, guess what? You're not here to make money. I'm not here to make money, so you might as well don't bother with your work it's like well i might as well go be a freaking store you know storekeeper somewhere or sales rep somewhere because i'll earn more money than comic books because at the end of the day you know if you're not in it to earn a living for yourself why do it oh because i I understand because i mean as an artist i understand this because you want to do art but you also want success to come from that art you want to be able to go well i want to do one you know i want to hopefully out of this ten thousand that i'm stuff that i'm working on or 100 different things that i'm working on one of them will be a success and like you said if it's a success then you put a whole lot of effort in that at one thing and the other things you just put it to the side so it doesn't work i mean it's the same thing we do with plank right we do comic books we do a magazine and we do the um with the convention so that if either of them don't work or one or two of them don't work we still have one that will right and then we put all our efforts into things that we that will work. But if you if, if if you're like these guys here who just went and said, okay, you know what, we'll do V Wars instead of the Bloodshot, right? And then you realize that Netflix is like, you did a terrible job with V Wars. We're not going to do second season. So all that merchandising ideas that you had about V Wars, you're not going to get, right? So all that yeah, I can't see how that merchandising right. So so all all the toys like this. Isn't going to be sold on V Wars or the posters, uh, the comics, because people are going to say, video "Well, games. yeah, video games isn't going to happen." But if you went out and just said, "Look, let's create the universe that we have, which is the Valiant universe of you know, of those characters, and do that," then we can do that. But forty-five million dollars isn't a drop in the bucket for a company like Valiant, and Valiant is Valiant is owned by a Chinese conglomerate. Right, and so, but, so they, they have to do the. They, they try to put out a brave, a brave new effort. 
yeah. something new that they hadn't experienced before, and they put everything into it, yeah. which is a risk, but it's the only way of succeeding as well and showing yeah. what they can do. And so I think, you know, I, I can appreciate the fact that, I mean, not oh, yeah. to see a piece of movies with money, yeah. but if the movie was good, that's yeah. an important thing, you know, if the movie was, you know, is a positive experience or could lead people to believe there's potential, mm. it's better than just being a flop. Yeah. Um, yeah, which, from what I'm hearing, it's not a flop, and so, it's, you know, like, I think it's probably worth it. I mean, even if they do lose, so they, they made $30 million in the couple of days that they did, yeah. they make some more. Yeah, I mean, a lot of money to risk. They, they were rolling the dice anyway. If they lose $10 million, I'm sure, you know, that was something they were prepared for, even though yeah. they might not have wanted it. Yeah. But I mean, also, I mean, it, like you said, yeah, it's only been three days that there was a theater, so that would have been easily $90 million. Give it another week. If they had the whole week, they would have easily made $100 million in that first week. And um, and it's not such a, uh, like you said, it's not such a, such a bad, if, if that's the what people are seeing, and, you know, it's not, uh, I think the rating was 6.3 on IMDb. So, so it's not a basic movie. And so the... Um, it's a good setup for the universe. So if you're an editor, you'd basically go, you know, hey man, we put out value and people were really, look at that. We made, a, you know, three or two thirds of the, of the money at the end. That's how you would do it. I would do that. I'd say, look, you know, uh, we, yeah, we only in movies for theater weeks. We got affected by that. But guess what? We'll be back in the movie theaters after this happens. I'm not going to freaking go on about something like capitalism. I'm not in this for the, you know, for money and all this. Because if you're an editor, yeah, if you're an editor, yeah, if you're an, you put you you um you put a brave face on the positive thing that's happening in your company, not on a negative thing that you're seeing in the world, and especially now when there's you know you're in a, you're in lockdown, and basically the the whole comic book and mainstream comic book and this, these companies here, these bigger ones, they basically told all their writers to stop writing, or that uh, you know it's like why would you want to do that? So what's going to happen is if we do that, two months down the road after this is over, you're going to have no work to put out. So myself, like I, I look at that and I go, you know what? I'm still going to be pencils up. I'm still going to be working. I haven't stopped. I was talking to my mum yesterday. She said, well, are you stopped working or what are you doing? Are you, you know, I said, look, mum, I don't, I don't have a, I don't have the opportunity to stop working because for me, right? For me, I still have to have a weekly page up. And I still have to make sure that page is up on that day because it's a web comic now. But in a, in a couple of months, the first issue of Incredible is supposed to come out. So if I don't, if I put pencils down, issue number two isn't going to follow that, right? We're not going to have that finished. But then I said to mom, I said, look, hey, but on top of that, mom, I've started another comic, right? The uh, the two bubbles are debating comic uh, panel thing, because. I still don't. I still want to be make sure that once that's done, maybe we'll get some artists to actually work on that to turn that into another comic book, a one shot about the coronavirus thing, right? So we have a coronavirus comic book while we're in the middle of it. So I don't understand these bigger people who have a bit bigger audience having a negative response to what's going on rather than putting a positive image well, on think, it. I think they just put their opinion into it. Yeah. Just Yeah. They're just doing that. Yeah. Um, but it's two different people, though. I mean, the creative people, a lot of creative people don't care about any of that. And yeah. yes, they'd like to be rich, but that's not their driver or their main driver. Yeah. They don't necessarily believe that's going to happen for them. Whereas mm. someone like yourself is more like a, a leader, you yeah. know, kind of thing, an innovator. Yeah. But creatives aren't necessarily always innovators. Mm. Like a lot of us just like, oh, well, you know, like, I gave it a go. And, yeah. You know, so you said, yeah, so I can get that opinion. A lot of people put their politics into things, which is, uh, I'm not, you know, what's it called? With the mass capitalism. Yeah. You know, um, you know, just make their statement because they feel it's important to make that. And it's nice if a company doesn't 100% agree with capitalism. Um, mm. But is it necessary to put in a press statement for your movie or you know, yeah. you're trying to make up or like build people's confidence in you? You're right. They yeah. probably could have done that better. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 a it's a really I mean this is the thing that like tests you the hard times is it it really tests you on how you respond to them, because it really brings out like um, 
who you really are. You know, how do you handle the tough times? It's easy to respond to, you know, things when it's easy and good times, money's rolling in and stuff and you're happy and, you know, don't have to worry about toilet paper, right? In some countries, you still can't get toilet paper because it's gone, you know, but like, you know, and sort of menial things like that, that we don't even used to care about. But so adding negative things to that is kind of, defeats the purpose of showing that and but it also does show you who you are as a as a person who can handle that and i think uh, it's 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 good to be tested sometimes in the hardships because it really tests you to figure out mm, you know can you handle it part of the problem is sometimes to them it's not a negative thing yeah like for them they're trying to they're trying to make a change to the world or show that they care about things way yeah. and it comes across negative or it comes across you know like but they don't see it that way just because it's so important yeah like you know like it's, it's like any of these arguments mm. the race thing the sex thing yeah like it's, it's, they're, they're trying to make a statement but it's, it's, it's not the best place for it i suppose mm. and it doesn't matter it doesn't matter for comic books yeah Do we care if they care about capitalism or not I yeah really Yeah. Yeah, it's good enough. And yeah, and that's at the end of the day, that's what it matters. Is it a good thing? Are they doing good work? Because if they are they doing they're a good work, product. yeah. And if if they are putting a good thing, then everybody will be you know people majority of people will be behind it. Um, did you did you see? Um, okay, just moving on to sci-fi now with a new show. Um, it's here somewhere. Let me just find it. Now, I posted about this earlier. It's called Tales from the Loop. Do you know much about Simon um, Halligan? I think it's Halligan, if I remember right, if I got this words. Uh, he's a sci-fi artist. Simon Stick. Uh, no, hold on. Simon Stalligan, Stella, Stella Hag, Stellenhag. Now, this... this Hag. So there's this new show called Tales from the Loop, and it looks it looks really really good, guys. Uh, hey Tama, hi hi Tama, hey David, thanks for joining us, and everybody else is going to be watching this later or watching it now. Thank you for joining us. So Tales from the Loop is this new uh, Prime Video show original, and um, let's watch the um, this really cool um, which um, sorry trailer for it I've, I've watched it twice already and it's just such a such a really cool um thing and i'm really excited to watch it lights off hey, your camera's pointing the wrong way. all right let's see here we go um Someone says something's impossible. I prove it's possible. <laughs> now everything in life makes sense. connected to the loop in one way or another. See, there's nothing to be afraid of. What do you reckon? Yeah, it's yeah, it's it started today on Prime Video. So if you have Prime Video, you're able to watch that. Whether it's an epic heist, giant oh, robots, no. or the continuous 
continued escapades of vampiric weirdos. This is what I don't like with um, for what's a stream in April. IMDB, it just the they just do this whole automatic friggin' play thing sometimes, which is quite annoying. I might have to sign off, brother. Yeah, I was just gonna say, um, we're gonna, yeah, next la round we're just gonna have a, this is our test drive on this, but we're gonna try to, I'll, I'll try to look at uh, Streamlabs and work out through tomorrow, maybe, if you've got time, we can, yeah, uh, work out how we can do like a proper stream thing. The thing is with my, uh, with my Mac, it does, it's quite, it's 10 years old, so the, the camera and all that isn't that great, so I'm a bit worried about the quality of the video we put out. So hopefully we can do it with, uh, with a cell phone, with a cell phone which is like the best quality camera right now on it and it might be better if we can do it that way but man cheers thank you for hanging out uh for the past hour or so Thanks for having me. and um yeah we got to get do our friday night yeah i can't believe it's friday i thought it was saturday Please. awesome <laughs> i hope everyone is okay and um like i already mentioned with toilet paper if anyone in the Hungary area is dead out like um Cool. Did you see the guy who was like um, in America who had basically bought tons of it and was like uh, selling it, you know, hiked up prices, and he got done. Um, he got yeah, he got dobbed in and um, the, um he got arrested. A lot of people get in trouble for that. Yeah, and um. Piling uh, hand sanitizer and things. Yeah, it's yeah. I think like I was saying earlier that people. This is what test shows people what they really like. You can, you know, because the real thing that they don't realize is that after this is all over, people are going to remember that, how they behaved in this time, you know? And uh, that's the thing. It's like, like, we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about this a couple of weeks ago about how if, you, if, if you're online, you shouldn't be putting and saying stuff that you wouldn't be able to back that up or how you behave, right? That you shouldn't say something that you're not going to, you know, that you're not, com you know, that you wouldn't say otherwise. Probably was a little bit nonchalant, but that's definitely me. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's really serious, and the people that does affect really badly, you know, obviously we hope everyone's safe. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's really serious, and the people that does affect really badly, you know, obviously we hope everyone's safe. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, you're right. It's just being opinionated and loud. But interestingly, these guys making a lot of money off getting in trouble for making money for solar paper. Yeah. Uh, the capitalist USO came out. <laughs> well, I mean, there is. They, the, they saw an opportunity and they're taking advantage of it. Well, there is also. I mean, but there, there is a there is that um, part where people would, even if it wasn't capitalism, they'd still behave this way because it's in their nature to behave this way. And yeah, and that's it was, it's selfish. that's it. That's the thing it comes down to. It's like, if, are people selfish? Uh, and and or are they, you know, are they caring? But yeah. in all honesty, don't, don't you think humanity generally is, we are generally selfish to yeah. some degree? Yeah. I, I am, but I'm not as selfish as those people. Exactly. Uh, humanity, especially the way our civilization has grown, we've, we've become more selfish for us and our families and, you know, mm. our little bubbles than worrying about everybody else. Yeah. Um, not to say we don't care at all, but, you know, like it's, I think humanity is more selfish anyway, inherently. Mm, mm, you're right there. I think, and I think it's it's a, it's yeah. This is going to be a good time for us to learn who are the, who are uncaring and who are caring, and um, mm. or who are just yeah you know, middle of the right line, you know, middle of the road. Most people are the majority of people are just middle of the road. They you know they're caring and uncaring, and they just you know just want yeah, help well, you. I'm, A lot of my customers up here and things will attest to it. Like, I, I was yeah. happy to go to work and help people. And, you know, you could be real scared and go, oh, I'm not going to work. But, like, and I thought it was really lovely to be able to help people. The, mm. the few people that actually needed the banking help that I was able to go and offer, yeah. it was a nice thing to do. Like, I felt in that they really, you know, it was a nice human experience. Mm. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a mixed bag. You're right. It's a mixed bag. All right, guys, I'm going to sign up at the same time that, um, Rico's going to sign off, so just want to say that we, I'm excited about um, about Rick and Morty coming back on the 3rd of May. 